Yesterday, Sieraji began to speak about Virya Sambojanga, and he mentioned that there are three levels of virya, three kinds. The first is the initial effort. Second is the effort, one has to boost one's effort from that point to overcome laziness. And the third type, the type which increases stage by stage, until one reaches one's goal. Once one gets over laziness and reaches the other side, the virya has good momentum and one reaches the point of parekamadatu. The prefix para in this word means that it goes up stage by stage. So virya, we, we use this to get the mind to reach the object. And we do it once and again and again. So we do it successively. This is uh, the prefix para in this has the meaning of parampara, that it increases successively. And there isn't any uh, lapse or any drop. It doesn't drop. Especially when one reaches the stage of Udiya Bhyanyana, seeing the fast arising and passing away of phenomena, our effort becomes uh, called, reaches the stage of Arata Virya, developed effort. So one has gone through the stage of applying initial effort and reached the stage where one's effort is going up stage by stage, parekamadatu. <clears throat> and this has, is also called, this, uh, this part <clears throat> is also called pagaha virya because of the way it goes up without stagnating. It doesn't drop down and it doesn't stop in the middle. It has momentum and is always increasing. And later on this virya becomes fulfilled, paripuna. So whatever one does, this virya application of effort is very important. And to the extent that one's furia is good, one can gain results. And this is especially so in the practice. When our effort reaches this, this stage of pegaha virya and parekama tattu, uh, then one is able to dispel unwholesomeness, akusala, so that they don't uh, so that they don't arise, one can prevent it, and one can generate wholesomeness, kusala, that is, start it. And one can also dispel what is blameworthy and, and cause that which is blameless, faultless, to multiply. So, in this way, one can keep oneself clean. This is the result of virya, and it is very essential. Parekama virya, this virya that increases in a, spe in a special way, virya sambojanga, this is because one is able to observe without missing every object that arises within one's kaya, vedana, chitta, and dhamma, these four large fields of observation, whatever arises, one is able to observe it without missing. Our virya has gone from being 
first of all started it increases it's we develop it and it becomes enlarged and at that point then laziness which that's in all the other akusalas it has no chance to arise so the mind uh, this this effort um prevents the mind from going in the direction of laziness and it encourages it gradually builds builds up and elevates the active side so this is uh in the nature of the the word pagaha which means that it keeps on um, the energy keeps on going up it doesn't drop it has momentum and later it becomes fulfilled completed so one who possesses this type of effort is called arada viryo that that means one who possesses this type of um, developed effort that has reached this stage of being pagaha and the benefit of it, of this type of effort developing it to the stage is a kusalan pajahati the person is able to dispel a kusala even before it arises by making one's defense strong so it's a matter of uh, preventive action this virya together with the other states involved in observation is occurring and the akusala is dispelled in a moment so this is this is the momentum of virya akusala is being dispelled and the mind is led by wholesome states first of all by sati and then it is led by samadhi samadhi becomes strong and then led by knowledge so these are developed automatically so think about it initially one needs to deliberately aim in order to observe the object aim and apply one's energy but when one becomes skilled in the practice then this quality of aiming vitaka is no longer present neither is vichara later on at the stage of udiya vijnana the qualities both of aiming and rubbing vitaka and vichara are not there any longer but they have left their influence and what it's similar to is that like when a person uh, plays darts and becomes skilled at throwing the dart when when a person is skilled they don't have to deliberately aim anymore they can just throw and hit the target so that is what it's like at the stage of udiya vijnana and for the yogi the um the work goes along in a very good way and this makes one happy everybody who experiences this experiences this uh feels a, the type of joyous interest at this point and this is called pt pt develops Piti Sambhojanga is a special cause for gaining vipassana knowledge and for gaining path knowledge. It's a joyous happiness. At the start, the yogi doesn't experience this, and then boredom sets in, and one wants to leave the retreat. and if one has to continue practicing one does so but very unenthusiastically 
however, when the uh, when the object of uh, when one sees the object of observation, uh, the old one continually being replaced by the new, uh, again and again, the object uh, arising and then disappearing in a very fleeting, fast manner, the yogi becomes very satisfied, and this is called piti. And at this time, the um, the body one feels like one is rising up or floating in the air. This is because of obega piti. And then there's the stage of farana piti. This joy that pervades the entire body, just the way oil soaks through a cotton ball. It feels very, very good when this joy pervades the whole body. This is called paranapiti. And one feels quite joyous at this stage. And then there's no more boredom or weariness. Piti has dispelled this. This is delight in the Dhamma, Dhamma Rati, happiness in the Dhamma, Dhammananda, joy in the Dhamma, Dhamma Rama. And this is the first start of the cause of gaining the Dhamma. At this time, those people who like sense pleasures, a desirable, seeing a desirable view or object, hearing a delightful, pleasant sound, inhaling a, a beautiful, a delightful fragrance, and then touch between men and women, taste and touch. Uh, because one didn't experience piti before, uh, such people thought that these types of sense pleasures were the best. And people waste their times with these. Of course, these types of pleasures are good, but they can be dangerous because when one goes after these, they lead one to one's death. The good that one experiences in the Dhamma is not like this. It said, Sabarati, Dhammarati, Sabarating, Dhammarati, Jinati. That means that the delight in the Dhamma, that is piti, that, how should I say, it conquers, it's better than all the types of pleasures that one can get in the world. So at this time, when one experiences piti, you know, this joyous interest in the, in the practice, one won't have any desire for sent the delight of sense pleasures, kama rati. One will just want to make one's dhamma delight more and more firm, better and better. And one's effort to do this increases automatically. So if in one month a yogi has not reached this stage, it indicates that the yogi is being careless. At this time in the practice, one thinks that one has gained special dhamma. This can happen. And sometimes yogis just stop because they think they're at the end of the path. At this time, the meditation teacher is very important because this thinking that piti, joyous interest, is special dhamma. This is a mistaken idea. And if someone, uh, if we just leave it and don't observe this, uh, if someone, if we, if this is something that the teacher needs to point out if we're not observing it. Whatever arises, one has to observe it. 
as soon as it arises. If one doesn't observe, one won't know. And not knowing, then there will be dukkha and jnana. With regard to what is the truth of suffering, there will be ignorance, moha, avijja. And one will waver because one's sati is no longer there. So one won't, when one doesn't observe, one won't be knowing the dhamma, which is the truth of suffering. And not knowing will be their ignorance. And in, in addition to this, there will be a lack of disgust for the unwholesome mind. This is ahiri. There will also be lack of fear regarding letting akusala arise. This is anotapa. And the mind will become separated from the object and scatter. This is called odicca. It's as though the mind flies up over the object. So these four unwholesome qualities mind states will be occurring together with the uh, unwholesome mind consciousness akusala and if this happens every second then in 60 uh, in one minute there will be 60 occurrences at least of the unwholesome mind with these unwholesome mind states This is a disturbance to the practice. It disrupts our work. And if one continues to let this happen in five minutes, there will be at least 300 occurrences of the unwholesome consciousness, akusala citta. And in one hour, 3,600 occurrences at minimum. So... Uh, this is what will arise and together with the unwholesome mind other other mind states can arise there can be loba, greed there can be dissatisfaction anger and one can even go back to normal you, one can, one's mind can even go back to this a, a normal state like it was before practicing so in this case, instead of using one's time beneficially, what has happened is that akusala has had the chance to arise. Therefore, one is not to let one's mind be without the control of sati. One is not to let akusala, unwholesomeness, come in. And especially when one sees how mind and matter arise and pass in a, away in a very fleeting manner, one has to observe uh, the joy that one feels at that time. So the Buddha posed a riddle in this regard, and he said, what he said is, one should not let the mind go out. One should not let the mind stay in. One who doesn't let the mind go out nor let it stay in is sure to gain true peace. And after saying this, he stepped down from the, uh, from the chair where he was giving the Dhamma talk and left. So the listeners did not know what the Buddha meant by this. And therefore they asked one of the monks who was there, the Venerable Kachayana, to explain. And what the Venerable Kachayana explained is very good. And for today's yogis, it is very much worth remembering. The Mahatera explained in this way, the mind going out 
That means that if one doesn't observe what is happening when it happens, that means the mind is going out. So what is happening, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, bending, stretching, lifting, moving, placing, standing, turning, opening and closing the eyes, blinking. And if one doesn't observe when seeing, that means the mind goes out. If one doesn't observe when hearing, then the mind goes out. If one doesn't observe smelling when it happens, then the mind goes out. Tasting, then the mind goes out. If one doesn't observe touching when it happens, the mind goes out. If one doesn't observe thinking when it happens, that means the mind is going out. So at that moment, there's no effort to push the mind so that it meets the arising object. Thus, without effort, laziness comes in. Because there's no effort, there's no sati. And the collected mind becomes dispersed. So at that point, the mind is going free. And the mind, when it meets up, you know, without this control, when it meets up with something that it likes, then it starts to enjoy it or have greed. And when it meets up with something detestable, then it reacts with anger. And there's always ignorance. Every, every moment of the time, there will be ignorance. So at that moment, whatever mind and matter is arising with regard to that, because there's no observation, there's ignorance. Together with ignorance, there are the unwholesome factors of ahiri, anotapa, and odicca, the lack of moral fear, lack of moral dread, and restlessness or scatteredness. So when the mind connects with something that it, uh, that it finds to its taste, then there's greed, loba. And if it's not to our taste, then there will be dosa, anger. And in this way, one suffers uh, from the occurrence of the kilesas. So this is what is meant by the mind going out. But if one observes whatever arises, when it arises, then the mind does not go out. When, a, when one observes the seeing when it arises, or hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, <laughs> bending, stretching, lifting, moving, placing, blinking, opening and closing the eyes, observing these when they happen, then the mind does not go out. So this is very good and it's also very brief. So if one doesn't observe when something arises, then the mind will go out. So in order to keep the mind from going out, one has to observe every seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and this is in accordance with what the Buddha instructed us to do, to observe at the moment of arising. And when we do this, the mind is clean. The effort, we, we make effort to observe, and this time when we do it, there's no need to aim. The mind, there's, the mind doesn't miss we just make effort and without deliberately aiming, the mind meets accurately with the object. So this is very obvious when, when this happens to one at the, in the practice. Sati is very well established, supatita. 
and to the extent that our sati is good, our samadhi also becomes good. And following on this samadhi is knowledge. Knowledge arises. And then one experiences things such as lights. One sees lights. Uh, there's joy, piti. There's pasati, tranquility. Um, but at this time, one is not to think that these are special dhamma. So if one... Uh, doesn't observe these things when they arise, then one won't know. And not knowing, then the mind will be going out. So that is how one has to note. And to not stay in means that when something pleasant arises, one has to note it and dispel it. If one doesn't note the pleasant object and takes pleasure in it, then one has to note that. So if one takes pleasure in the pleasant things that arise because of failing to note, that means one is stopping within. One shouldn't stop uh, and enjoy the pleasant dhammas that arise in one. This is stopping within. So when pleasant things arise, they must be observed. And if, if it goes to the extent where one finds oneself taking pleasure in something pleasant, one has to observe that until it's gone. So it, this is something that the yogis at this stage need to know very much. This piti sampo janga, which occurs, is a, is a support for vipassana knowledge and path knowledge. Or, in another way of looking at it, it is the cause for one who comes to know vipassana knowledge and path knowledge. And following on piti, there is tranquility. Piti manasa kayo pasambati. So one's body becomes tranquil. And initially, one, has, one is following the instruction to observe at every arising, always guard the mind. Thus at every seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and so on, one is observing and the noting becomes good and therefore the nivaranas the dhammas which block wholesomeness these are gradually eliminated and this is very obvious in the practice first of all the mind becomes clean and then later on knowledge arises. So at first there's small scale PT, small scale joy, called PT Pamausa. And this one experiences this as goose flesh or flashes of lightning uh, through one's body. This is the smaller uh, minor version of, of joyous interest. At the stage of Udhyabhyanyana, there is strong piti. And at that time, one is quite joyous, the mind is clear, and there's no more tiredness. Pasadi, this tranquility, is a state that is free of tiredness. When one reaches this stage, there's no type of heat burning in the body or the mind. The body and mind both feel cool and peaceful. The mind and body feel light. There's no heaviness. The mind and body both feel pliable. One is ready to note 
the objects are ready to be noted. So the, the noting is very easy. One is able to work very easily. One has gained skill. And one also at this point remembers one's life. And one remembers because at this stage one's mind is very upright, one remembers what one did wrong and one becomes very honest uh, and open and frank and corrects oneself. And one will even, uh, one will confess to the teacher at this stage even. And if, some, if there's someone, uh, a yogi who's committed a murder, they confess this to the teacher at this time. The mind is, is very honest and straightforward at this time. And this honesty, this quality is very evident. So starting with piti, uh, from that there becomes this coolness, lightness, pliability, being skilled and being very upright. These qualities all come together with pasadi, tranquility. And this is where the, the special qualities of a good person start to come to be. And this part is, of the practice is very good. Tomorrow, Sayadaji will speak about how this factor of pasadi sambojanga arises and how it, how it is helpful in balancing.